The Matsu Island chain is an integral part of the Taiwan Island complex, stronghold of the Republic of China. The Matsu chain and the entire Taiwan complex comprise a heavily armed, fortified landmass, virtually afloat off the coast of communist China, which is visible in the distance. These scenes of the red coastline show communist sampans just offshore. They were photographed at a distance of five miles from Gaodong, nearest of the nine Matsu Islands. On Matsu Island itself, two United States Army advisors and a nationalist officer examine holes created by communist propaganda shells. The round is of Chinese manufacture and probably was fired by a Russian-made 122-millimeter field gun. Only 25 meters from where the shells landed stands the Matsu headquarters of the U.S. Military Assistance Advisory Group. MAG on Matsu is commonly referred to as MUDCAT, a contraction of Matsu Defense Command Advisor Team. Some of the team's functions will be explained by its chief, Lieutenant Colonel Charles I. White. MUDCAT has the mission to observe, assist, and advise Matsu Defense Command on the use and maintenance of all equipment in the military assistance program. In addition to monitoring the utilization of equipment, we also frequently check the training of all types of units. As team chief, I also monitor the infantry, artillery, and the air defense artillery units within the Matsu Defense Command. To accomplish this mission, our team consists in addition to myself, an ordnance advisor, a signal advisor, three communicators, an administrative specialist, and lastly but not leastly, a Navy medic. The Matsu Defense Command Cadre School on Matsu Island is one of MUDCAT's advisory responsibilities. This class on the M1 rifle is part of the 12-week course that provides instruction and training in the usual NCO subjects, including weaponry, tactics, and leadership. Bayonet drill and karate help sharpen these embryo nationalist non-coms, many of whom will be assigned to units stationed on the other eight islands in the Matsu complex. The Matsu Defense Command's highly trained, physically toughened troops are part of a well-equipped nationalist armed force that numbers more than 600,000 in the entire Taiwan complex. An ammunition reconditioning center set up deep within a cave for security against communist shelling is another Matsu installation, which receives advice from Mudcat. Maintenance problems on Matsu are compounded by the need to keep ammo in operational readiness at all times, rather than in storage. Civic action is another responsibility of Mudcat. For two years, team members have been conducting a twice-weekly physical training program at the Matsu Junior Middle School, attended by children from all nine islands. While inside the school, other team members conduct English classes five times a week. Okay, we're off to New York. Taxi, taxi. Taxi, taxi. Where to, sir? Where to, sir? It will take... 20 minutes. As soon as possible, please. As soon as possible, please. 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 However, it is with nationalist army personnel that U.S. advisors devote their most intensive efforts. These scuba divers participating in a beach landing exercise are members of an amphibious reconnaissance company assigned to the Matsu Defense Command. As other members of the company wait offshore, the two scuba divers crawl onto the beach to make a reconnaissance. This exercise is only one example of the exceptionally varied training being given to nationalist soldiers on Matsu. And Mudcat is helping to improve the combat readiness of these already capable troops. At this radio station, 
Mudcat frequently advises broadcast specialists under contract to the Matsu Defense Command. Here, they beam propaganda to the Chinese mainland. Another form of psychological warfare originating on Matsu is the use of propaganda balloons. Boxes of leaflets are attached to some to be released over the mainland by a timing device. Scarce items such as clothing, ballpoint pens, and toothpaste are also included in the propaganda payloads. Soaring across the Taiwan Straits, they are yet another means of informing people on the mainland that the free world offers a more plentiful way of life.